The Nissan LEAF is the world's first mass-produced, purpose-built electric car that's not only designed to reduce your day-to-day -day running costs, but it's also wrapped up in a usable family hatchback size package. It's about the same size as a Volkswagen Golf or Ford Focus, but because it's powered by electricity alone, it'll save you lots of money in fuel. These days, competition is getting stronger though. Rivals are launching their own take on the practical electric car, as well as more convenient plug-in hybrids and even hydrogen fuel cell cars. So the big question is, how does the Nissan LEAF stack up to these new challenges? One of the big concerns that many motorists have about electric vehicles is what's known as range anxiety. It's the fear of running out of electricity part way through a journey. I mean, it's not like you can pull into a petrol station and top up like you can in a conventional petrol or diesel car. The good news is battery technology is getting better. The LEAF has two battery options a 24 kilowatt that according to Nissan will do 109 miles or a 30 kilowatt which will extend this by 44 miles. In the real world though it's more likely to be closer to 70 to 80 miles for the 24 kilowatt and between 100 and 120 miles for the 30 kilowatt. Driving an electric car will change your driving habits. We've spoken to numerous LEAF owners who said that they've no concerns using it day in day out but when they are going on a longer journey they do have to do a lot more planning to factor in charging stations. Long journeys aren't completely out of the question though. If you plug your leaf into a rapid charger, it'll top your battery up to about 80% in around 20 minutes, just enough time for you to grab a cup of coffee. All of the electric motors torque is available from standstill, so as soon as you hit the accelerator, the leaf pulls away with surprising urgency. Whichever version you go for, performance figures are the same. Both will do 0 to 60 in around 11 and a half seconds. Now that may not sound blistering, but it really does feel a lot quicker from behind the wheel. You don't have to worry about changing gears either. Simply stick it into drive like a normal automatic and you're away. There's also a B mode which activates maximum energy recuperation. This is useful when going down hills because you can essentially use gravity to put some charge back into the battery. The Leaf is pretty comfortable and the suspension does a good job of soaking up lumps and bumps in the road. It can be a bit unsettled by larger potholes, but it's certainly no worse than mainstream competition. As good as it is around town, it behaves itself at higher speeds on motorways where it feels stable and impressively comfortable. The steering is light, which is handy for urban manoeuvres like parking or turning around. But some of the competition, like the Volkswagen e-Golf or BMW i3, are a bit more involving to drive. As you'd expect for a car with no conventional petrol engine, there's no noise whatsoever. In fact, those headlamps and wing mirrors were specifically designed to reduce wind noise. The Nissan LEAF is a comfortable five-seater, however, getting a perfect driving position is a bit tricky because the steering wheel only adjusts for height, doesn't adjust for reach as well. You also sit quite high in the LEAF, large because the batteries run along the floor. It's not really a major problem unless you're over six foot. Electric cars may be labelled cars of the future, but there's nothing out of the ordinary when it comes to the LEAF's interior. The dials and controls are logically laid out, and the midlife facelift also improved the looks of the interior, giving it a more modern, stylish appearance. All round visibility is pretty good thanks to large windows and pillars that are a sensible size. The Nissan Connect Media System, which is standard on all but the entry-level Vizier model, adds a reversing camera which helps in tight parking spaces. Upgrade to Tecna and you'll get an all-round view monitor, which shows a bird's eye view of the car and what's around you. It's an excellent system. As we said before, the batteries run along the floor of the car and that does impact cabin space, especially when you get to the boot. You don't get a totally flat floor, but it is bigger than the boot that you'll find in the Volkswagen e-Golf. It is an odd shape though, especially when you take into consideration the intruding suspension struts. If you do find yourself needing more space, then it can be increased 
by folding the 60-40 split folding rear seats. One thing to bear in mind is that all the charging gubbins take up space too, as does the Bose subwoofer in the top of the range Tecno models. Up front there's lots of places to store drinks and bits and pieces around the cabin. The glove box isn't particularly spacious though. In the back, three adults will get comfortable, but anyone over six foot may struggle with headroom. Also, anyone who's sitting in the middle will have to put up with this tunnel that runs down the length of the car. The Leaf may be cheap to run, but it's not that cheap to buy, especially when compared to petrol and diesel rivals. And that's even after you've taken into consideration the £4,500 government electric vehicle grant. There are big savings to be made elsewhere though. It's zero emissions means it's road tax exempt. And if you live in London, there's no congestion charge to pay. The Leaf is also a cheap company car. Nissan's reliability record is pretty good, but it's reassuring to know rather than having one standard warranty, various components are covered for different durations. So for example, the car's standard components get a three year, 60,000 mile warranty, while the motor and battery get a five year, 60,000 mile warranty for the 24 kilowatt version or eight years on the 30 kilowatt model. If you're looking to cut down on your running costs and help save the planet, then the Nissan LEAF could just well be the answer. For more information, search for the Nissan LEAF on whatcar.com and to keep up to date with all our latest video road tests, click subscribe.